Hello and welcome back to the stream. And welcome back to Minecraft. I forgot I had done this last time. We're kind of just going to wait on these. <laughs> yeah, welcome. I'm looking forward to the stream today. Happy Friday. I did a thing earlier. Oh, that frightened me a little bit. Some weird generation there too. I did a thing earlier where I was going to introduce the stream with like a wacky international day that it was. You know how like you'll occasionally see news from, you know, BuzzFeed-esque clickbait stuff. Where it's like, it's international day of leprechauns or whatever. And there is no international day today. It's like the one day a year, February 19th, where there isn't one. So that plan fell through. <laughs> uh, let me just briefly adjust my monitor. There we go. Because it's kind of acting as a speech jammer again. I need to fix that at some point. <laughs> it would be good to do that. Anyway, um, we have some plans for the stream today. Happy no international day day. <laughs> That's as good as anything, I guess. I mean, some of them are kind of ridiculous as it is, which is why I was looking it up in the first place. Somebody mentioned it to me as like, aren't those always ridiculous? And I went, yeah, they are. Oh god, another one of you bastards. <laughs> Baby mummy. Okay, I'm not going to panic this time. In fact, I don't know if he can actually get to me. Oh no, he can. Right, kill the mummy. And then we can talk. <laughs> Right, what we have today is we're going to try and build a train station. You know, I don't know how big it's going to be or how ornate it's going to be, but we're going to build, hopefully, kind of a cool looking train station. Hopefully. And then, after that, you know, we're going to stay a little bit extra long in Minecraft today, I think, just because I'm having fun with it. And then, the last hour or so of the stream, I'm going to try Among Us for the first time. I don't know, I'm, I'm slightly dreading it, because... I know I'm going to be really bad at it. But it should be fun. I mean, it's a game that virtually everyone loves, I think, so it can't be too bad. I don't... I've never played it, and also I've never even, um, like, loaded into a game. I've never seen it played, really. I think I've seen about five minutes total of, uh, of the game. Like, I tuned in for about five minutes of that, like, AOC, um playthrough of it and then kind of left after a little bit because I was like I don't really understand what's happening but it was like two euro so <laughs> why not okay I'll just refresh these a little bit and then we'll get to building okay we're gonna build here and we're still kind of waiting on the stone bricks, but I do want to clear out some of the sand first anyway. So that'll give them time to cook. I wish there was a quicker way of making those. Like, I wish you could do it in the stone cutter without having to smelt them. The stone cutter is maybe a bit too powerful for that anyway, but it's very convenient. And it's annoying me that I'm going to have to smelt all of these blocks. <laughs> I don't really have, like, a particular design in mind. Although, I don't know. I mean, everybody knows what a train station looks like. You know, big and grand and stone. So something like that. There's probably going to be a lot of mining. And a lot of waiting around for things to smelt. So it's not going to be the most interesting stream in the world, I think. Just trying to keep the steps a bit even here. Okay. That looks cut back enough, I think. I'll go see what, what the, the stone situation is. This is about to break anyway. Okay. I'm going to have more sand than a barrel can hold. Also, I haven't turned off the bloom yet, and it's slightly annoying me. 
I might do that in a couple of minutes. Okay, so I have some stone bricks here. I kind of want to wait for these to be fully smelted before I take them out, just so I have even stacks. I have a couple of stone bricks. I can lay a foundation, I think. Can I, can I like, mash these into something? I'll be using chisel stone bricks as well, I think. I think that's a good idea. So maybe let's make a couple of these. Man, I don't know if it's my new earphones or what, but that sounded so loud. I've been adjusting to these new headphones. They're, um... They're studio headphones, which means they are way more sensitive than I'm used to. I don't know what... I, I can't remember buying my old headphones. I had them for like eight years. Um, they were JVCs, and I can't remember what code name they were. But, um... I had them for a ridiculously long time, and I really liked them, but these these are about quadruple the volume and way more sensitive. So I keep I keep hearing things and thinking they're actually behind me. It's getting it's taking some getting used to, who's all I'll say. I was listening to music um like an hour ago. Is this big enough? Well it'll go down, so I'm just building an archway here, and most of this will be underground. Yeah, I was listening to music earlier. I was listening to, like, a Depeche Mode album. And there was, like, you know, ambient noises in it of, like, footsteps. And I genuinely thought that my girlfriend had walked up behind me and was trying to frighten me. So I, like, spun round in my chair. And I frightened the guinea pigs who were sleeping by my, uh, by my feet. There's some sort of, uh, surround sound stuff going on. Anyway, we need... Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting around, really. Like, eight more blocks, and then we're, we're done. I've had, um... I've had an okay day so far. Ignore that voice crack. I've had an okay day so far. It's it's currently raining quite heavily, and my neighbours sound like they're having a horrible time. About five minutes ago, just before the stream started, I got a knock at my door. Uh, and I opened it up, and there was somebody in high-res... Or high vis, I should say, vest, uh, and like construction boots on, saying they were from the council, and that there was like flooding in my area because I live on a hill, and they were like, "There's flooding on the hill. Are you like, are you okay?" Because like the, the houses either side of you are completely flooded. I was like, "Oh, okay. Um, I'll keep an eye out for it, but we seem fine. So that sucks for them, but we're fine. I don't know how we're fine." If both of them are flooded, but, you know, we are. Uh, it is raining very heavily, though, and it is very, very cold. But I have the heating on, and I have a dressing gown over my clothes. So I'm actually feeling pretty okay. And I actually am clean-shaven again, so that's always nice. I hadn't shaved in, like, three or four days, and I was getting incredibly scruffy. And when I when I get scruffy, I feel worse. Like it, it's like a mood debuff. It's really annoying. Um, so now I feel all fresh and nice. It's it's just been kind of an okay time this morning. It's it's been a nice day. Our past house was in a dip, so the entire so our entire floors were ruined. Oof. I'm quite lucky in that our town floods quite a bit. Um, we get semi regular floods here. Not, you know, the worst floods in the world, but um, we're a seaside town and, you know, the climate is fucked. So <laughs> we we get quite a lot of floods. Um, is it better to make these in the stone cutter, by the way? But yeah, we get quite a lot of floods, but we live uphill from the rest of the town. So nothing ever touches us here. Uh, the only time it would flood is if, you know, stuff running down the hill came in. Okay, I don't know if this is better or not. I think it's an even trade, whatever you do. Yeah, sure. That's enough to get started, I think, building. I got to literally swim in the street, though, which was cool. I have never done that. <laughs> I have known people who have, but I've never done that. Although here, my god, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, Quite a filthy town. <laughs> 
and quite filthy beach water up until quite recently. And ice cold. So yeah, it would be a pretty bad time. Like, uh, we live we live about halfway up, like, a pretty steep hill. Um, so sometimes when it floods, you'll go down, and basically you won't be able to go downtown anymore. It'll just be, like, a little pond at the foot of the hill. It's like, nope, no cars can get through here, and honestly, if you walk through here, you will be ruined for about two days. So don't, don't do that. Okay, I think, I think something like this, right? And then have like three wide, and then something like this. Yeah, yeah, this this seems okay, I think. I know I've never gotten too badly flooded in my life. I've always lived in a place where it was okay. Hello, thanks for joining the chat. Buckle in for a lot of Minecraft. <laughs> Uh, I do want to shovel, because I am going to need to shovel out stuff, so I'll just do that and sleep. I should actually probably bring my bed out here, so I don't have to keep running back. Oh, there is some, there is like a, a sort of pseudo-celebration day happening. The the Mars rover landed. I watched that happen. That was kind of fun. I'm not hugely into space stuff. I was never one of those space kids who's like, uh, who gets into like all the space encyclopedias and stuff. But, you know, it is cool. Like, it's it's fun to watch. But uh, I I did watch the the clip of the the moment the the Mars rover, the new one, Perseverance, touched down. That was kind of cool. Very happy nerds all over that room. Uh, I should put some of this stuff away. I watched it live too. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was infectious. Even though again, I'm not that much into it. <laughs> I think space. I I go through periods where uh, I'll be really into space. And then I sort of just forget about it. It's never been like a passion of mine. A very happy nerd in this home, I cheered out loud. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, don't, I can't imagine this is just me, but I do find the rovers themselves extremely cute. Like, I think they're adorable. I think I've seen people say that before, like about the Curiosity rover. But um, I think they basically look a bit like pets. I love them. <laughs> I've never been, uh, like I said about the space thing. Um, like I've never been that into space exploration and I've never been that into sci-fi. But there is something infectious and cool about it. You know, it's why people get, you know, uh, so invested in that, that weird man Elon Musk. Because if you, if you ignore all of his personality, he's quite cool in getting into space. Okay, we'll, we'll do it like this. We'll have like an archway here. And then like a big staircase going down. I think that sounds cool. Yeah, something like that. And then we'll have uh, like steps on either side. Hmm. And then windows. Maybe this will be a window. Yeah, I saw the the first the first images from from the new rover. I don't know why they're still in black and white. Uh, you'd think they would not be in black and white at this at this stage of science. <laughs> There's probably very very good engineering reasons, but uh, I did look at them and go like, oh, uh, Mars is less red than I remember. Oh right, they're in black and white. <laughs> Hmm. This is looking okay. I might put some uh some chiseled blocks here, maybe. See how they look. Yeah, they look pretty cool. I'm gonna use more of those. Hmm. I don't know, I'm kinda designing on the fly here. I I had people on my Twitter feed going mad about the about the perseverance thing. It was fun. I don't know, I like getting caught up in that kind of thing sometimes. It's like the last thing I actually watched on the news live was um was the American presidential election probably. It takes a lot more data to transmit color. That data did get transferred to a satellite who should have sent those improved images by now. Okay, so I just it's kind of on a lag time, then. 
That's interesting. Oh, I have an update on my, um, my sort of adventures in updating my fashion sense. The, uh, I bought some eyeliner, which I'm currently wearing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like two euro. I didn't realize how cheaply you could buy makeup. I was all, always under the impression that it was quite expensive. But, uh, the only two pieces of makeup I've ever bought are... This eyeliner for, like, 150 or two euro, and then some, some... Similarly priced uh, nail varnish. It in terms of pics in Discord, uh, maybe. <laughs> but in um, I don't know. I'm very hesitant to show my face. Probably ever. Honestly, I've been. I have the a, a face cam in my shopping list on Amazon, and I still haven't clicked to order. <laughs> but um, in terms of actual like ease of use. Eyeliner is so much easier than the nail varnish. I hate applying nail varnish. Nail varnish takes like 20 minutes to put on properly. And I always rush it and kind of ruin it. And I just get irritated by it in general. Eyeliner is like 10 seconds per eye. It's fantastic. Eyeliner I can see myself using kind of full time. But nail varnish I'm like, eh, nah, <laughs> no thank you. It is just a little bit too much effort. Yeah, I've been um I've been doing some clothes shopping online, which I don't really like to do. Not because uh you know, I don't like clothes shopping, although I don't really like clothes shopping. But um just because, you know, it's hard to actually get a, a sense of what you're actually buying in when you're doing online purchases. Like I'm I'm very hesitant to buy clothes online, usually. Because the sizing is so variable. I'm gonna bring the stone cutter out here, I think. Or maybe make another one. But I, I did buy some clothes. Although buying clothes as a guy online, you know, buying like male presenting clothes, is, it made me realise what marketers think of me for the first time. <laughs> did you check for no animal testing marks? I always do, yes. <laughs> um, And it I can't remember what brand it is. It's like either Rimmel or Max Factor or something like that, but it's a... Uh, it is cruelty free. But um, every piece of, or half the pieces of clothing, because I was looking for like a nice looking kind of messenger bag and like just some, some like tops or whatever. And half of them had the word tactical in the, in the, in the tags and looked ridiculous. Like they looked like sort of people who were cosplaying Batman would, would get these would get these pieces of clothing. And I don't get it. Like, I've never been into that at all. I don't really understand it, fundamentally. But it seems to be a big thing. Like, you know, every bag, it was like, okay, that's a nice bag. Tactical, um, you know, uh, you know, tactical lunchbox and stuff like that, with just, like, an army camo pattern on it. And I was like, this is silly. Who actually buys these things? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to fill in that roof a little bit more. There we go. Usually, blank free products get marked up quite a bit. I uh, I haven't re I wouldn't know enough to to comment. <laughs> like I said, I I don't really have any experience buying or applying makeup. I actually had to Google how to apply eyeliner. Um. It makes me feel very, um, I don't know. I, I'm not really good at anything. <laughs> like, um, I, I, because I didn't take, I, I regret not taking home economics in, in secondary school. Like, I did for a year, and it gave me some, like, very basic cooking skills, but I didn't really take it for long. And because of that, it, I, I suck at everything. <laughs> like, I'm really bad at anything household. Um, I have to Google everything. Like, I, I've, I had to, like, so, like, you know, look up a 10-minute video on how to sew clothes. 
because I was like, I want to stitch up some stuff and uh, had no idea because I just didn't take that class. I feel like that should be a mandatory thing, Homek. Because everybody, everyone kind of laughed at Homek when I, when I was in school, which sucks. Like, that's obviously dumb. But um, everybody laughed at Homek. You know, if you took Homek, people made fun of you for being gay. Uh, it was that kind of era. And so no no boy took home ec past first year. Because we had a system where if you were in first year, you had to do all the subjects for, you know... It was not a great system, really. You got you got a taster, but they it, it did kind of cut into actual learning, because you had, like, one class of everything a week. Yeah, that, look, that looks kind of nice. I'm into it. I, th I think we can start uh, chiseling out a pathway down. Don't really know how deep to go. And I think we want it... Yeah, we want... Um, maybe more sand. We want it to start a bit further in, I think. Like here. Something like that. But yeah, I, I wish I had taken it. Because that first year, I actually had fun in Homek. I thought Homek was quite, quite a nice class. I enjoyed it and I thought the teacher was nice, but uh again, you just if you were a boy in in my secondary school, you did not take home ec. <laughs> like people would make fun of you more than they already did, you know? <laughs> Which sucks. Like it taught it teaches some like very useful life stuff, like you know, I think I don't know why people had a problem with it really. I I mean I I do, you know, it's like any sort of household Knowledge seems to get demonized for men, but um, you know, it taught me it, it. You know, people would be like embroidering and sewing on buttons and, you know, stitching clothes and making things, and then everybody who didn't take it would be like, I have no idea how to do any of this, and I will either have to ask my partner or parents to do this for the rest of my life, because I have no idea. I didn't even know how to wash my own clothes and I'm 20 years old. I I was kind of in the same boat. I had to Google where like each detergent thing goes in the washing machine when I moved out. Because I had never run a washing machine really. Um, like I had, you know, I learned, I taught myself to cook independently when I was like 16. Um, because like I was, and, and when I stopped eating meat, obviously I had to make all my own food because uh, my parents did. Oh, I have smooth stone too. I should, uh, I should look into that. Hmm. But yeah, um, all of that sort of thing I had to learn going out of, uh, of my own house. And I'm bad at it. <laughs> still. Like, I'm still not good at this. Like, I still don't, I'm still not 100% sure I'm using my washing machine correctly. Or my dryer. Like, I've looked it up, but I'm still not 100% sure that I'm putting things in the right places with those things. Which is embarrassing to even say, honestly. Like, I should know. I started cooking at, like, 10 because my dad loved cooking. Uh, I'm out of coal somehow, by the way. I need to go mine for coal. Let's, uh, let's go do that. My dad loved cooking and I did really well at presenting it like something a man should know and do. Hmm. It's weird, like, that's another thing with the home ec thing. Most, like, 99% of famous chefs in the world are men. Um, and yet there's still, like, that stigma um, to learn how to cook. At least where I grew up, there definitely was. It's a uh, jump down but not die. There's, there's a trick in this, I'm sure. Oh, God, nearly did it. Okay, let's mine up some coal. Yeah, I learned to cook just because, I don't know, I liked food. Um, I don't really know why I learned to cook. Because um, I, I started learning to cook at, like like I said, maybe 16, 15, something like that. And then, like, properly learned to cook because I had to when I was, like, um, maybe 18. Because that's when I stopped eating meat. And my parents, at that point, still, still ate exclusively meat. So I was like, I'm going to have to. Otherwise, I don't eat. Well, cooking at 10 meant eggs, bacon, and toast, and pancakes. <laughs> but now I'm definitely the best cook in the house. My mum also... Well, she's... Actually, no, that's not fair to say. My mum is a lot better a cook than she was. Growing up, she was a terrible cook. <laughs> like, I'm I'm an okay cook. I'm not 
amazing, but uh, I'm I'm fine. My my mum was genuinely terrible. Like absolutely could not cook to save her life. My mum's it, it, very Irish. My mum's idea of cooking was, I'm going to boil this meat for. I, I will buy a chunk of meat. I will boil it for about an hour, um, until it is a healthy shade of grey, and then serve it with some potatoes. That was my my mum's idea of cooking. Same with my grandmother. Like, bacon and cabbage was big in our house. Which is the most stereotypical Irish food I can think of. Um, but it, it does exist. Boiled meat? Oh, you have not been to Ireland or England. Or Scotland. Anywhere anywhere in the British Isles. That is standard. My mum still, if she's making... If she's making something like um, shepherd's pie or like spaghetti, like a spaghetti sauce with with uh, like ground beef mince in it, she will boil the the mince. And I keep I, I, even when I was living there and when I ate meat, I was like, you, "Why are you boiling this? It's horrible!" Like she's literally she literally pours hot water into a pot, dumps the meat in, and then turns up the heat and then walks away until like you know an hour has gone by. Instead of frying it like everyone else. Um, and that is the traditional way of cooking in Ireland, basically. Like, the the most traditional dish I can think of in Ireland. Who the hell boils meat? I'm about to say. Like, um, the traditional way of cooking meat in Ireland is you get a chunk of bacon. Like, a, a side of bacon. Or like, you know, like, you know, like a, a basically like a giant cube of bacon cut from a pig. And then you boil that in hot water for about two hours. And then you serve that with cabbage and potatoes. And that is that is how you cook in Ireland. Um, that is a meal I had probably a hundred times as a child at my grandparents' house. That and then like... A, oh my god. <laughs> just, uh, just absolutely knocked over my microphone there. That was probably very loud and unpleasant. <laughs> Ireland trip cancelled. Irish food is truly some of the worst food you will ever find internationally. Like, you know, Irish food is genuinely terrible. Like, we don't really have any sort of specific cuisine in Ireland. It's kind of just stuff that's been ripped off from England. And it's usually the worst stuff because, like, up until, you know, if you don't know anything about Irish history, up until the 1970s, Ireland was considered a developing country. Like, genuinely dirt poor. You know, people were exclusively labourers who lived on cheap boiled meat and fish. That was that was Irish cuisine. Um, and Irish food has not really adapted itself for, you know, anything else. So, like, now it's a bit better. Now, you, would, you will not find that in a restaurant, I will say. Like, now things are better in, like, you know, we have, like, a thriving restaurant scene. But... If you go to someone's house um, and their like their mother is cooking or their grandmother is cooking for you, that is what you should expect. <laughs> you know, I, I always feel jealous of like, um, you know, the trope of like Italians, like their, 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 their families are always so into cooking and like they have this, uh, they're constantly like, oh yeah, home cooked meals are better than anything you could ever get in a restaurant. In Ireland, uh... People have, like, stronger jaws because of the food we eat as a kid. <laughs> you, you can't get over the boiled meat. <laughs> I have seen... The, the smell of boiling... Like, in particular, with my mum. Like, the smell of... Um, slowly boiling... Ground beef mince. Um, will never leave me. Like, I will never forget that. Like, it's vividly ingrained in my brain. And always will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad I'm not going to say anything else about it but it is bad like I can't defend it it's just we don't have like that food culture like like I said we we anybody you know like my parents were born in the, the early 70s and at that point like that was still pre-EU like they grew up in you know like my parents tell stories and now because I never grew up in that like Ireland, over the course of about 20 years, changed into a completely different country after we joined the EU. Like, we became, over the course of, like, 15 years, we became a first world country after being not that. So I don't have any memory of any of this sort of thing. But my parents will tell stories to me of, like, 
having to like not not owning a shower for the first thing and then having one bath a week that they had to share you know that kind of thing where it's like genuinely horrifying to think about but and like the sort of thing you associate with like um you know eastern bloc countries in the 60s <laughs> but um that that was where we were at uh and you know the food reflects that my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. <laughs> I do love that video. Okay, I'll just get a couple of stacks of coal in here. We should have enough coal to last a while now. I'm surprised we ran out. I thought we had been picking it up more than we had. Uh, and let's store this in here too. Sure. We're actually low on a lot of stuff. Like ore in particular. Yeah, I mean, I, Ireland doesn't really have much culture, honestly. Beyond hating the English, the Irish do not have that much culture. Well, no, hating the English and hating the Northern Irish. That's kind of our culture. It's like when um, you hear Canadians talk about, you know, basically Canadian culture is we're not America. Irish culture is kind of we're not England. And beyond that, there isn't really much to speak of. Alright, I don't know where I'm going to put this smooth stone or what I'm really doing with it, but, uh, you know, we'll do something with it. Right now, I just want to create this, like, block of stuff. We'll put up some scaffolding that we can carve out some details from. Poor Irish culture getting erased by England and globalization. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I was like, we didn't really have a culture to get erased by globalization because it had already been killed by the English. <laughs> you know, I think everybody knows the stories. Well, I, d I actually don't know if anybody knows the stories about about uh, Ireland during English rule, where like um, you would get arrested or killed basically if you uh, if you practiced Irish culture or spoke in Irish, that kind of thing. It was not great, you know. <laughs> But it does mean that, you know, anything, any sort of sense of Irish culture is kind of gone. Like, we don't really have it. Um, like I said, Irish is kind of characterized by not being English and being angry at the English. And it's more of a joking thing now. Like, nobody really gives a fuck anymore. <laughs> to be fair, if they boiled the meat, th that I can understand. Uh, I mean, England does that too. <laughs> Not as much. England kind of grew with the times a little bit, but I've definitely seen boiled uh, boiled ham and stuff on the menu in England. What? <laughs> English food is notoriously awful. Like, uh, for every beef wellington that exists, there's a grey shapeless boiled meat next to Yorkshire puddings, which is also great. Or, well, with England, it's it's half that and also roasting it until it's grey. Or, like, roasting it until it's black on the outside. Um, I mean, there's a reason that, you know, the nickname, the French nickname for Eng English people for a long time was roast beefs. Um, because that's all they ate. It was just, like, dry roast beef with Yorkshire puddings. And again, I do kind of love that. Like, when I ate meat, Yorkshire pudding was, like, the thing you had. Okay, we're we're getting down to stone, which is nice. <laughs> I I do feel jealous for um for Europeans because like mainland Europe, I should say, because we are European too. Um, although not you know we're European, but I don't know how many people would actually say that. Like we are by dictionary definition, we are Europeans, but I think a lot of people would uh, consider themselves. Irish instead of European. You know, they would they would say they wouldn't even think of saying that they were European here. Cuz you know, it's that island mentality again, which is always a bit weird. Hmm. 
Yeah, that looks nice. We'll make more of these. But yeah, mainland Europe has a much more interesting food culture, you know. Until you get to Germany and then it's bad again. <laughs> like, German food is pretty vile, honestly. Like, it's all incredibly fatty sausage and mashed potatoes. But, you know, still better than Ireland. Hmm. I think I want an acacia floor. So I might start laying that down. And then... Yeah, I want more chiseled chiseled stone bricks. So I might just make a stack of those. Yeah, that sounds good. To be fair, most of the good foods that we have came from France and Italy. Yeah, those people nev never made it beyond the English courts. So that kind of explains the boiled meat, I guess. Yeah, like, f France and Italy are renowned, obviously. And then everywhere else is a bit weird. Like, Scandinavian food is not particularly well-liked internationally. Um... <laughs> German food, not particularly. Unless you're in, unless you're shopping in Aldi or Lidl, uh, you're not going to find German food anywhere. Um, nobody really wants it or enjoys it. Although sometimes, you know, when I was a kid, I lived on German cured sausages, basically. Um, you know, with names that I couldn't possibly pronounce. But, um, you know, that's kind of what I lived on for a while. Just because it was dirt cheap. <laughs> The closer to the Mediterranean, the better the food. That does seem to be the case, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bad food cultures. Like, Asian food is intermittently amazing. You know, like, Chinese food... Like, you know, westernized Chinese food is probably my favorite food, honestly. Like, the favorite food if I'm buying, like... You know, takeaway food is it's always that. Um But then, you know, they eat some bizarre things. And then you have like the like I said, the Scandinavians with their fermented fish, which is pretty vile. You have us with our boiled meat. I prefer the non westernized Asian foods. I don't know if I've actually had very much authentic Asian food. Cause again, Ireland you know, as as good as it is now in Ireland. Uh, we're still not a ma like exactly an international food hub. Like it's only it's only in the last maybe five years that I've actually seen like nice Mexican food here. Like until then it was pretty pretty dire. Like you couldn't find anything aside from basically burgers and chips here for a long time. Um, but now apparently we have like decent sushi and stuff, but I, uh, you know, around that time was when I stopped eating sushi, so, you know, I wouldn't know. Okay, we'll make like a grand staircase down here. I don't want to go too deep, so maybe only like a few more steps. We really don't get Mexican food here beyond nachos and the occasional taco or burrito style wraps. That's where we were. Now we have an okay uh, Mexican food thing here. At least where I'm from, in Cork. Um, like, there's a few decent decent places to go. None in my town, which sucks. I I genuinely, like, miss having, like, good burritos. Um, but there is n it does not exist in this small town. It's not ubiquitous enough. Okay, I think maybe this will do for, like, depth. So we'll just go straight out here. Start building, like, a... A base for our train station. I do really like Mexican food. I really like Indian food. Although I had some genuinely bad Indian food last night. Um, some very like oily, not very well made Indian food. From a local place. Which is very hit and miss. I tend to gamble there because it's like one of the only Indian places around here. But it's like, this was not good. I actually threw some of it away this morning instead of eating it. Which I almost never do. I don't know. I, I'm, I've never been that much into food culture either, to be honest. 
And I think it's because I live in Ireland and there isn't really much of it around. Again, like, the most common restaurants here are probably Italian restaurants. Like, I, I have a really good Italian restaurant in my town, um, which I, I'm very happy for because, you know, that's not really the norm in Ireland. But um, I have a very, very, very nice Italian Italian place that's right next to me, um, which I go to, well, went to more now, uh, or, or less now, I should say. But, uh, you know, that's always nice to go to. Other than that, you know, you're not going to find... You're not going to find much. I would say it goes it Italian and then Chinese and then Thai, probably. And then maybe Indian past that. And then kind of just... As above all of that, it's just kind of general, you know, like, you know, gourmet burger places are huge here right now. Every other restaurant in Cork City is a gourmet burger place. Welcome to the chat. Thank you for joining. Yeah, it, it's annoying. Not even fast food, just kind of, um... Just kind of like um like very expensive food, honestly. Like my uh my girlfriend's like favourite restaurant in Cork City is a place called Bunsen Burger. Or well one of them. It's a place called Bunsen Burger. Which is, you know, a pun. Um and it's basically just very, very expensive, very gourmet, kind of pretentious burgers. Which apparently are amazing, but I've never had one because it only opened after I went vegan, so I've never actually had one. But I keep getting dragged there and then just sitting there annoyed eating chips you know <laughs> while, I, while people around me eat it's always like a go-to place for like like slightly upscale you know it's like a slightly upscale place so people go there for like birthdays or night outs and stuff like that and uh although people are starting to adopt the like uh fake meat stuff here more and more like you know fast food chains and stuff are offering the like impossible or beyond burgers instead of instead of those really grim veggie patties that you used to get. I get why they why those exist, but I never liked them. 